Welcome to From the Lives, where today we're going to be going over how to set up a basic flyer, a basic sort of like jet fighter bomber type of construct. We're going to be looking at a number of things such as the airplane movement, the bombing run and the aerial bombing. We're going to be looking at the custom controlled surfaces for our wings, you know, how to create the flaps for our altitude, our pitch and our roll. Also going to be looking into the PID, how to set up a PID and just a basic sort of like overall explanation of the PID. And hopefully some other, you know, uh, tips to help you out with your flyer. So I do hope that this tutorial does help a number of you people out. So let's just get on with it. So the first thing that we need is a hull. So I'm just going to hit B on the keyboard there and pop into our hulls. And so that everyone is using the exact same thing. So there won't be any confusion as to, you know, why is mine listing? Why is mine pitching up always or nose diving and all that good stuff? We're going to use the same hull. So hopefully you guys are also going to be doing the same thing. So we have a hull there. Just put it down on this wooden block. Going to get rid of that wooden block. And going to come into here. Bring up our mirror mode. Okay, so over here, you know, we have all of this alloy, all of these alloy blocks. Uh, these We're going to be swapping these out later on for the proper wing surfaces. Um, but just for now, just so I have a proper outline, I'm just going to finish this off like that. Alrighty, so over here, what we're going to do is go into our air tab, custom control surfaces. We're going to create a pivot. So our pivot, this is what's going to be controlling our flaps. So this is going to be moving our flaps, you know, up and down. Uh, I'm just going to put it there and extend this. So one, two, three, four, and five. That should be enough. And five like that. Now, so that our flaps do not connect to each other. Over here, I'm going to go out from our custom control surface. I'm going to custom wings. I'm going to get one of these two meters and put that down like so. Righty. Okay, so over here, what we're going to do is we're going to set up another pivot and this pivot is going to be looking after our roll so I'm going to pop that in there I'm just going to fill this area up pretty much going to follow what we had going on previously with those alloy blocks so this is still our pivot over here so I'm going to fill in this area as well with some control surface like that so that is this flap here is going to be used for our roll and our roll on this side currently is on roll at one. So roll is a positive. Um, we may have to change this up late or we'll have to wait and see. And over here, you know, this is going to be the opposite, like so. Around here on our control surface, we're going to turn on strafe and hover. Now, you don't really need this for a plane, but it just. Sorry, I, I did want to go through this, you know, just to make sure that we cover, you know, how to sort of look after your altitude with flaps. Uh, it's not quite needed on this sort of like flyer, but, you know, I just wanted to go through that with you all. like that so we have those sorted and we're going to do the same on the back here who read the links over here at the back what we have done is we've set up another you know pivot another control surface this is set the pitch up so this whole bit here is one large flap looking after our pitch we've done the same thing on the other side as well this is set the pitch up so that is exactly the same then over here we have set up another two pivots so these two are both pointing inwards and this one is set for your left and this one is set for your right so these hopefully when this is flying they'll both be rotating you know in the same direction so these guys are going to be looking after our yaw um right so the next bit is probably just to briefly go on about the center of mass drag and lift so uh currently our center of mass is right here in the middle which is very good and our thrusters should also be in the middle as well if you do put them higher up you're gonna your jet here is gonna end up nose diving a lot and you're gonna have to put a lot of um either other propulsion methods to keep your pitch to you know stay level 
um, which you know is just going to cause problems. So always try to keep your thrusters directly in the center of mass like that on the same level. And yes, the same thing will also happen if you do have them under your center of mass, it's going to cause your jet to pitch upwards. Now inside the jet engine over here, you can use these to fix that issue if you do um, put your jets higher or lower than your center of mass. So as you can see, it does, you know, hopefully will fix this issue. You know, if you don't have any space to put your jets uh, and you need to put them higher or lower than your center of mass. So generally you want to try to keep your drag, your center of mass, well, your drag and your lift, generally you want to keep them as close as possible to your center of mass. This will really help you balance out your car, your, your jet here um, without a lot of, you know, painstaking tuning or adding more thrusters and all of that. So generally it's a good idea to keep your drag there in the mid, you know, close to the center of mass. Okay, so I've just added in a couple of um, ammo storage here on the front. Hopefully that's going to be enough for what we need. Down here at the back, I've added some steam uh, power generation. Um, we're not going to be going into the whole um, what's going to be efficient to run this jet or how much material this thing is burning or how many marauders this thing is going to be burning. Um, that will, you know, happen at a later date for sure. So just got a couple of the basics down to generate some electrical power for us. And over here in the burn rate control, I've turned these all up onto one. Now we need materials to burn. So let us get some material storage down. And for this tutorial, like I said, I'm just going to put down a minimal amount. Obviously in the campaign, you definitely want to put in much more materials than we have here or have a support construct with this one, sharing resources or materials or just ammo or ammo and power. So we've got that down. Um, let's get that power nice and used now the reason why i'm probably going a little bit overboard with the uh, batteries is because over here um these have had an update this update has been out for quite some time now but it's outputting four times the amount you know four times the force of a normal jet would use um, from prior updates and therefore it is using six times the amount of power so if you do end up building a construct and you're like, you know, this thing is just using way too much power. I don't have enough power to uh, power everything. You can come into here and you can just scale the power usage down. Obviously, this is going to slow down your construct, but at least, you know, you'll have enough power to run the construct. And the other reason is, you know, obviously, well, I say obviously, I'm going to be putting in some ammo processors as well. And these guys, they do take quite a bit of power to run as well as our jets. So let's get some of these down like so. Um, to be honest, I don't really know how much we're going to be needing just to keep things, you know, running smoothly. Um, but I think, you know, we can say that's probably enough for now. If we do have space, we'll add some more later on. Righty, so the next thing we need is the AI. Okay, so the next thing we need is obviously some brains to this construct. So we're going to need a mainframe. So let's get that thing down already. Um, We will need a method to look after our pitch, our yaw, our roll, and our altitude. The altitude, I mean, it's not really needed, but I did want to try to use everything in one sort of like construct. So we've got that there. We will enable these later on because i want to show you guys you know this thing working without um you know our pids so we'll see how it's going to work and then how it's going to work differently when we turn on our pids and when we set them up so over here we also want some weapon systems and for this tutorial i'm just gonna pull out some ai connectors i mean firstly this they're close to the mainframe Secondly, on small flyers like this, I try not to use the wireless receiver, just, you know, so our detection is a little bit harder. So for the enemy to detect us a little bit harder. So that is that. That's probably, that's why I do that there. So we're going to have one of those. We're going to have our missiles. So we're going to have one of these. I'm going to turn this round so we have, you know, a connection facing this way, just in case, you know, we want to swap things up and I want to add 
an identify for our add-on, for example, if we're going to use missiles. Um, but for this tutorial, we're going to be using mines, um, so that's not really needed. Those excellent stuff. Just get these things set up. So we're going to use a magnet. We'll set these things up after, you know, when we're about to, you know, when we're about to test, you know, the uh, the weapons. So we'll move, I've added all of those, very good. We'll make one of these things a frag as well, just to mix things up a bit. And we'll do the same on this side. Excellent, so now we have all of these as well, the same as we do are over on that wing there. Let's fill this gap up for now, and like I said, you know, we will be swapping all of these out to proper wing blocks. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys this working you know, with these alloy um, alloy blocks, and then once we swap to the wings, because, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of tweaking to do there as well. Right, so we have those down. Um, detection, detection, detection. I suppose we could add in a bit of a detection thing as well. Um, that is connected there. Very good. Okay, so as this thing is using mines, we really do not need um, that many or, you know, such a large detection system. Um, we really want to know pretty much just the general sort of like altitude and distance of the target. And that is going to help us, you know, when we come into here and let's say, for example, we have bombing run or we have, let's see, <coughs> aerial bombing. Over here, as you can see, you know, we have a flyover height. So if, say, if we wanted to fly over at like 70 meters above the target, you know, we, we do need to know the target's altitude. And just adding a little bit of detection, even though we're using mines, is going to help us, you know, make making sure that we are at that altitude. So we'll get that down. We've got those down like so. And... We have enough GPP over there as well, so we're still at 100%, very good. Okay, so as a little chair for our little Rambot there, we now need to sort of like say what sort of like maneuver and what, you know, we want this to do. So for our movement, we're going to be going and we're going to be using the airplane movement. Um, I personally would not use the plane movement for now, um, it is a little bit depreciated, this one, so we'll be using the airplane movement. So for now, we're going to leave everything at zero, or everything at, at default. And we're going to see how that works. We also need our aerial bombing as well. Make sure that it's set to active. And we'll say we want you to fly, like I said before, straight at Cerventi, and we want a cruising altitude of 300. And we'll start our attack run. As these are sort of like large mines, we want to give them some time for them to reload. So let's say about 850 or 800. Let's take it down to 800. Um, you know, so it's going to it's gonna do its attack run. It's going to fly over the enemy at 70 meters. Then it's going to head back, head back up to 300 meters. It's going to keep on flying straight until it hits the 800 meter mark, where it's then going to turn and it's going to come down at the same time back to that 70 meter to fly over the enemy once more. So that's how that is supposed to work there. Um, at abort attack run went below uh, 50 meters, so the distance below which we will abort the attack run. So if we say we want to abort the attack run, let's keep it the same as 70 because it's you know, it's going to be flying over the target at 70, so it can't sort of like um, be 50 meters away if our target altitude at the time is going to be 70 meters. So we can keep that the same there. And over here in adjustments, we should probably try to do the same sort of like setup. So our minimum altitude above water, we'll say that our minimum is going to be 70 as well. So we don't want it to go under that for sure. So we're going to say, you know, minimum can be 70, the same for the land as well. And maximum altitude for this, I would say we probably want something like 300 as well. Might as well keep it there to the cruising altitude of 300. So we have that sorted. And let's just double check things. Okay, so the maximum roll for banking thrust. I tell you, we should probably set these up for now. So the maximum roll, I'm going to probably say, um, 
about 35 and then we'll see from there we can keep that the same uh, idle circle distance we can increase this for sure so what that means is you know if there's no enemy and the, the construct is in play instead of going tightly around a waypoint we've set up to go a wider distance around that waypoint so maximum pitch we can keep that default for now and we'll see how that's going to work you know when uh, we are sort of like diving down to that 70 meters so it's probably best as well as we are still you know tuning this system up is to install some hot air balloon deployers as well and i'm going to put them down you know like that and just going to flip them around again like so and fill in this area Now, in order to use these hot air balloons, uh, if we go back into our mainframe, we go back into our mainframe, we go into additional, so we're going to go into additionals, and right now, as you can see, you now we cannot add any, any more AI stuff to this construct, because we are currently using one and two there, and, you know, we don't have any addition, you know, free spots. So, like I said, you know, before we added this, over here this connector and go back into AI grab one of these guys point it around I know that we can't use this side because we have a general processing purpose card there but you know we can use this side and we also have another one on here because we're still building in mirror mode uh, so let's turn mirror mode off just for now and add in an additional routine card there slot it in and we'll turn our mirror mode back on so now we can add some more you know ai stuff to this construct and what we're going to be doing on this one is we're not going to be don't use thruster balancing it's it does mess around with the construct quite a lot it what what it does is let's say if you want to turn to to the right for example it's going to power down this jet engine here and it's going to keep this jet engine you know at full strength like that so it's going to help it turn to the right and it's also going to slow the construct down as well so i do sort of like avoid it un unless you really 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 need some more help uh turning the construct so we'll leave that as is so back over here additional uh, projectile avoidance that will be something else for another time over here what we are want what we want is this water start here for our hot air balloons and the balloons are going to turn on if we're under 10 meters and they're going to turn themselves off if once we are at 15 meters so we can leave that as as default for now i think that's going to work fine for this construct so yeah that's probably that's one of the reasons why i re i use the balloon deploys is when i'm setting up the ai i know it's going to be hitting the water a lot i know it's going to be crashing a lot until you fine tune the construct and then once it's fine tuned then you can get rid of them or you can keep them you know for the for the campaign so if i let go of our caps lock without our pids let's see how this thing is going to fly so it's very wavy we're hitting the water a bit there there goes our balloons to make sure that we are out of the water and again you know we hit the water once more okay and this is what it sort of like looks like uh we're just with the default settings on our pids so that's how it is looking it's looking much more stable um than it was previously that is for sure and pretty much all i've done i haven't done anything much really i mean i play over height are cruising out through still 300 but those will kick in in combat um what are they going to win below let's set this up to about 75 as well just have it a little bit more than our flyover so down here haven't done anything much just set the minimum altitude to 70 and just increase the max altitude to about 400 just seeing as we go over our cruising altitude just a little bit as well but in terms of the PIDs, we haven't done anything at all to them. These are still the current default settings, as you can see, like this. So what is happening here is the set point of our pitch. It's saying, look, I want to be about 15 degrees um, or 14 or 5, 11, as you can see there. That's, that's what it wants to be at. But currently, this is where we are at currently at the moment, which obviously, you know, is a massive difference between the two. 
So you're probably seeing these blue lines, and these things are way out of whack. They're going well out of our border over here, which we do definitely need to sort out. And we can sort that out by lowering our gain. So the gain is pretty much just the difference, the percentage of the difference between the current target state of the construct. Okay, and higher numbers are going to cause the PID to react more stronger. So currently it's, it's, it's reacting, you know, strong, too strong for what we currently have. So let's go over there. Let us, I just start to decrease it like by half, see how that is going to work out. What it's going to do down here. It doesn't look like it's done much. A little. Still, you know, we're still sort of like. Not quite there. I mean, there's still this difference. Now, it doesn't matter if there's going to be a great difference over here that much, to be honest. But I think we can most probably lower this down a little bit more. Perhaps some more. Pretty much, I'm just keeping an eye on our line here. Just seeing how that is working out. Now, I do know our derivative is probably a little bit too high as well. So, we can definitely decrease that. However, our integral over here, I haven't touched our integral just yet. We might do that, we'll probably do that later to, towards the end of this construct, you know, when we're just, you know, really fine tuning it. But the integral determines how quick the gain that will scale if your construct is off target for a certain amount of time. The lower this is set, the quicker the gain will increase and decrease. And 250, as you can see there, is turning it off. So I'm pretty sure that if I bring this down to one, <laughs> one second, um, as there goes, you know, the integral term has gone down quite a lot. And we're currently sort of like pretty much we're pretty much there. We probably are overcompensating, you know, overthinking things because of, of our trying to correct things in future a little too much, and therefore we're causing some other errors down here due to our derivative. So yes, the derivative is sort of like the time um, during which the PID records everything happening to the construct uh, on the selected axis, which is our pitch currently. The PID will try to use this window to predict future changes and compensate for them ahead of time. So if we set this to zero, the PID will have no way to predict the changes and will be prone to overshooting or wobbling. So typical values on this are usually between zero and one. Higher values can help compensate for regular disturbances such as, you know, a recoil. Um, but it can also create the risk that the PID will try to compensate for errors that are not regular and cause more instability overall. So, this is something that, you know, after a while, you know, after a long time of playing from the depths, after getting a different types of flyers, because different types of flyers, they're going to have different strengths in their pitch, in their role, they're going to weigh differently, and all of that. So, you're going to have different PIDs being set up. And that's probably one of the best ways to start to get used to using a PID, really. And you start to get a, getting a feel for it. So currently, we've set the derivative there to uh, one second. And that is looking quite good, to be honest. I mean, if we set it down even less, how is that going to look? It's not going to do that much of a difference. We'll leave it on one second. Yeah, we'll leave that on one second because most of this wobble that we're seeing now, it's the roll. If we look at it from the front here, it's the roll, not our pitch. Our pitch has been pretty much equal, the same, you know, all the time here, our set point and our current value. So we can probably go and look at our roll. I'll pop into here, our roll, as you can see, is the same as, you know, was our pitch. Um, this currently wants, you know, the set point to be zero, because we're, we're flying pretty much straight and level. Um, our, our roll to turn is, our braking turn is about 30 degrees, so currently we haven't, you know, we're not at a turning that needs more than 30 which is why it's not rolling, which is why that set point is staying at zero. 
So I'll back into our role. So with this guy here, we've got these things there way out of whack again. So let's just bring these down once more. 0.5. Is that going to do much of a difference? Doesn't really look like it. So we're going to bring those down a little bit more again. Probably just try to half it once more. And look at that. It's going flat. That's absolutely perfect. Well, close to. Close to perfect. Nice and smooth. How we want it. So I think we can probably leave the roll as is like that. But I... I'm guessing during a fight, this is going to have to come down. We're going to have to sort that um, that out. So let us bring in our favored test subject. We're dropping our bombs off way too early, but, you know, we have to set those up still. So our current altitude, we are under what we should be of 70. Kind of. We're going up again. Going up a little bit too high. Okay, well, a little bit too high there still. So yes, Devlin has some fine tuning left to do. Have a look at our roll. See what it's going to do when it rolls. So it wants to be at a set point of minus 45. As you can see in our current value is nowhere near it. So let us bring that down. As this is... This sort of like roll, it's going to happen after pretty much... The same amount of time. Because it's going to... Once it's at 800 meters away it's then going to turn so that is always going to happen so we can probably say that an integral a low integral time is probably going to work out okay for this one and yes uh your as you can see are yours going back and forwards like that which is also affecting things okay so 45 is probably a little bit too much as well for this construct so let us come down here and we'll bring us back down to like 35 and see how that is going to work out as well so i don't really want it gaining a lot of altitude when it's on when it's on a turn to see how it's going to react now coming out of that turn you know 800 meters away starting its turn it wants to be at 35 we are going a little bit over it, that is for sure. Let's bring this down a little bit more. So again, out on the turn. Still going a little over there. Okay, yeah, and we totally broke it there. So we could probably try to increase this some more then. Increase the integral just a little bit more. And that is pretty much, that's pretty damn close to, you know, that 35 that we wanted. So, yes, increasing integral just a little bit as well. We do have a little bit of, uh, you know, jaggedness going on there. Perhaps we can lower this a tiny bit. Much better. Excellent. So yes, like uh, as you can see now, I've only been increasing and decreasing, seeing how it's going to react, checking our current value, and and just you know, slight making slight changes to our variables over here. So that is the role. Last thing, well, well, not the last thing. We still have our hover to do, but probably check out our yaw because our yaw, I'm not really liking the way that, as you can see, this that that is something that i want to sort out as you can see here you know it went well over what it should be on uh your um could also probably be this our derivative how is that going to affect things so we still have but less now as you see it only done it twice only had a little bit there we might be able to just decrease this down to 50, see how that is going to do. Are we flying nice over it, yep. And our tail, we're not fishtailing around like we were before. Excellent, so that is looking quite good there as well now. Our hover. Now this hover really isn't needed that much on this construct, but you know, we might as well try to use it. Um, it's pretty much the same thing as we have been doing already for a uh, for other 
you know, parts of this. Um, the game right now, I know it looks very, very messy over here, but I think the way I'm seeing it is it's probably okay. And as our hover is not sort of like changing randomly all the time, and it should try to stay at a current sort of like stable, sort of like it gradually increases or decreases, uh, we can most probably bring this down to one. And we'll see how that is going to react. We are a little bit, you know... So we're supposed to hit that 300, but I don't think we have enough distance. Um, say if we set our attack run to be, you know, at a 1,000 meters away, it most probably would have hit that 300 and stayed stable at 300. But currently, you know, they're quite close together here from what it wants. So let's bring this down just a little bit. Okay, so that is quite close. Okay, so as we have this thing flying somewhat as we want it to be flying, probably the next thing that we should do is swap out these wings for, you know, the proper wings. Now, this is also going to change the way the construct works as well. This is why I left it for last, just to show you guys, you know, the difference between having the wings or just having normal blocks. So, let us start by getting this outline sorted out. So as you can see, you know, whilst doing this, it is already flying differently. We're now hitting the altitude of 320. Whereas before, I don't think we were hitting that mark at all. Who okay, so after setting up our new wings, we are nose diving. So let us quickly go over here and just check on these wings. Now over here we have a lift factor of positive one. As you can see, spread the spread two wings on the same subconstructor face the same direction. So what we're saying is we can make a lift factor of one or a lift factor of negative uh, one. Uh, change the lift of the wing block positive as in the axis plus direction right forward or up. Now what we are going to be doing is we're going to just go do the lift factor we're going to be setting up well we definitely have to go lower and as you can see that's already made a great difference so let's see what is our altitude current altitude is 91 we want to be about 70 and we do have a bit of a pitch there so if we bring this down further so you can see your altitude is going down coming down nicely hopefully <laughs> Hopefully nicely. And let's not forget, you know, we do have the whole drag issue where it's probably a little bit too far forwards. It needs to go backwards a little bit more, that's for sure. Um, okay, 7080. Well, 7980. Let's see, can we bring it down some more? Perhaps 5, whoops, 5%. Yeah, that might be sort of it for, you know, keeping us, you know, steady, keeping our altitude good. So, yes, a little bit of tweaks later, just pretty much just going through our PID systems, you know, just double checking out our set points and our current values, making sure that they're somewhat, you know, close to each other. I mean, obviously, that just triggered up to 300, so it has to take a bit of time to get there, that's for sure, you know. Um, this is our altitude after all. A couple of spikes um, when our set point, as you can see now, it just went to about 100 and something. And that is most probably due to the detection that it could be like, you know, a little bit of a blind spot for our detection. And we're not really detecting uh, Marauder over there properly. So it thinks that the altitude has sort of like changed a little bit there. But apart from that... We keep an eye on things, so their set point is still 70, 69, 70, 119 there, as you can see. So, yeah, there is a, you know, it's a little bit of a detection problem there, which is throwing things off a bit. That's where you get that little, you know, little wobble at the end there of that attack run. So, that is very good. So, if we just go through the, the uh, PIDs once more, so those are pretty much standard there, are uh, your... 
hardly touched it, just, you know, just the, the uh, derivative there. Pitch has pretty much remained the same. I'll just tweak it from, I think it was 0.3 to about 0.4, and we now have an integral of 1. Still works on a 250 as well. Um, I still recommend going at 250 uh, for your pitch. Our roll has remained, yeah, 0.21 and 1.5. Excellent stuff. So the next bit of beeswax is, yes, we have to set up a bit of a constraint and sort out our weapon system to be, you know, a little bit more precise, hopefully, kind of. And we have a bit of a gap here as well, which you most definitely fill, <laughs> fill up indeed. Local weapon controller. And I would probably say, you know, as we're doing some sort of like, well, to be honest, this is an attack run. It's not really a bombing run. I would use this sort of AI if I was using like a front mounted APS. Just to get lower to the to the level of, you know, the target there. So I would probably say, you know, the attack range bracket should be something about five three hundred and fifty. Um we don't want to shoot at anything that is greater than 10 in altitude, that is for sure, because, you know, then it's going to be like an air target, really. Uh, we can leave all of that as is. We will copy that. CTRL-C, CTRL-V on the next weapon controller there. Now, over here, we're going to be setting up our constraints. So I'm going to go onto the missile controller. I'm just hitting Q. Uh, we can leave that as is, that's no problem. Just click on that, enable extra constraints, and bring up this marker out so we can see, you know, what we're doing. Like that. And elevation. Let's start off with our azimuth. So our azimuth is going to be like our left and right direction. And 90 is definitely too wide. Um, that does look a bit right. About 25. Let's do the other one about 25. Right now I'm just eyeballing this and you know just previous sort of like experience with you know the sort of build. Um, 25 there, 25 there. And let's have a look at this elevation. Yeah we want probably definitely not right in front of us that is for sure but coming up to the target. So yeah about 10. And yeah, we'll keep that on 90. Like so. So hopefully that is going to be somewhat okay. We'll see what it's going to do on the next attack run. And uh, definitely copy that over to the other missile controller. Like so. How is it dropping the... Not bad, okay, so we seem to have, like, um, fired a little bit too late, so let us give that, what, about, uh, a little bit more, let's say, 380? Copy it over to the other one. Now, I'm not really trying to get these bombs to fall directly on top of the target, that's for sure, but at least, you know, close as possible, you know, and... Excellent stuff. So yes, that is pretty much working as I want. Now, like I said, you know, this sort of attack run when we're flying at a long distance, like eight, would we we are doing like 800 meters, and we're flying at sort of like a 70 altitude. I would probably say that this sort of um, attack run, you would most probably want to have this working with like a front-mounted sort of like uh, APS rather than using it as some sort of a dive bomber. Now. To get onto the other part of this tutorial is going to be the dive bombing part of this tutorial. Okay, so now we want to get some dive bombing action, and we're going to need another card slot because, you know, our capacity is full. So we're going to be adding another one of these guys over there, and one of these. Excellent stuff. Going to queue, and what are we doing? Aerial bombing. Okay, so we're now doing the bombing run. Excellent. So currently we've got our aerial bombing. It's active. That's what we were using uh, previously. Now you click on that. Now this one is active. You can have two of these on your construct and you can swap between the two for sh with uh, breadboard. But that's going to be something, you know, that we'll be looking, probably looking at in future. So our bombing run. Now, 
let us see how it's going to be working you know with these default settings um and we'll, you know we'll just go through the bits and pieces righty so the standard bombing run that looks like we've already gotten rid of him let's bring in another two or three <laughs> So, the standard bombing run, how is it looking? Well, first of all, we're probably dropping off our payload a little bit too far away. Now, again, you know, I'm not going to be trying to get this thing to drop the payload directly on the targets. That is something that you good people are going to be working out on your own. <laughs> so, it does take a lot of time, you know, um, tweaking the local level controller up and probably the constraints a little bit as well. So, looks like we're pulling away a little bit too soon. I would like it to get closer to the target and then pull away. So we come into here, go over to our bombing run. So, pitch the target distance. Um, let's shorten this. Let's bring this... Actually, we'll leave that as is. We'll change the break of distance for now. Let's let, lower that by half. We'll see how that is going to work out. So our combat altitude is currently 200, so we should be uh, sitting around the 200 altitude mark. And then when we're 800 meters away, we should start the nosedive. So we, yeah, so we're now nosediving. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So for this bombing run, we could probably set our local weapon controller up to fire those uh, bombs a little bit closer to the, you know, to the target. So we could probably say uh, 300 on this one and that one. So when we're closer, it should let go of them. Changed our target because that thing has got destroyed. So we're coming back in for another attack run. Definitely, definitely too low there to break off. We're about altitude of 20. Uh, it's not something that I want to happen. So break off distance, we can most probably increase this to about 250. Um, we can start probably our attack run a little bit closer as well. We can set our combat altitude a little bit higher too. So yeah, we've gone way too low there. Way too low indeed. So coming in. 600 meters and nose diving. Letting go of them. Kind of close to the target. Or at least it was aiming for that one, so not that one. But yeah, that seems to be working fine as well. So hopefully, you know, this <laughs> tutorial hopefully hasn't been too long for you all that you've been bored stiff. And hopefully, you know, it has helped a number of you good people out. Obviously, if you do have any questions, leave them in the box below. And we will make sure to get back to you all. Excellent stuff. Beautiful. So yes, hopefully you guys have enjoyed. And hopefully this will help you.